This is Trevor from Telecom Training. One of my viewers recently asked me, why is coaxial cable's inner conductor larger than twisted pair? They're talking about this conductor here that runs down the middle of the coaxial cable. Now, why is this larger than the conductor that we have within these twisted pair cables? Now, to be quite honest, I didn't really give it much thought before I was asked that question. And I dismissed it at first. I really didn't think there were anything significant about the difference. But I somehow kept thinking about that question. So I finally decided to do a bit of research. And what I found was definitely not what I expected. So I went ahead and did some research and I found all the different sizes of coaxial cables. Um, starting with RG58. RG58 has an AWG of 20. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. This is a gauge of the wire. RG58 has a gauge of 20, 59, has a gauge of 19, RG6, 18, and RG11, 12. What does this mean exactly? Well, first of all, these are the sizes of the wire. This is a diameter of the wire. This cable here, the size of this is a gauge. Now, you'll kind of think a gauge of 20 would be bigger than all the others since it's the biggest number, but it's really reverse. The biggest number is the smallest gauge. So 20 is actually the smallest one and 12 is the largest one, the largest diameter of the wire here, okay? So when I look over here at Twisted Pier now, I see a gauge of 22, 23, and 24. Now there are other gauges as well, but these are the most popular ones that are used within the telephone industry. But when you look at these, you'll notice that the twisted pair has much smaller gauges than the coaxial cable. The largest gauge over here is 12. Over here, the largest gauge is 22. So it's almost twice the size. This largest gauge here is almost twice the size of this one. So right away, I realized that, hey, the view is correct. The gauge of this inner conductor is much larger on the coaxial cable than twisted pair. Well, my next question was, why is that? Because I know for a fact that the reason why coaxial cables are much faster is because they have all the shielding around them and they're able to keep out the noise, the electromagnetic fields that would get into the core and disrupt what data you have sending on this in a conductor so, but why is it that it has to be thicker than this wire over here that is what I was puzzled about so I did a bit more digging to find out exactly why this is so I'm going to talk to you about that next the reason this inner conductor here running down the middle of the coaxial cable is larger than any twisted pair conductor is because of a term called the skin effect. Have any of you ever heard of this term? I'm really curious. If you have, please drop me a line in the comment area below. The skin effect has to do with how high frequencies travel through copper. And of course, this inner conductor here is made of copper. I'm going to use this diagram to explain how the skin effect is responsible for coaxial cables having a larger diameter than twisted pair. Now I'm using a modem here and I'm sending 100 megahertz from this modem. And I have a modem on the other side to receive that 100 megahertz. Now I have just a copper line, just a copper wire connecting from the this modem to that one this is not the way it would normally work 
but I'm putting a copper wire in here just to explain to you what the skin effect is. I'm just using this copper wire here, which is the inner conductor. Forget about all of this stuff. Just the copper wire is all I'm using because the reason you need a larger conductor has everything to do with the copper wire. It has nothing to do with anything else within the cable. So I'm just using the copper wire between this modem and that one to explain that, okay? Now this copper wire is the wire from an RG6 cable. It's AWG18, which is an 18 gauge. And you'll notice that on this wire here, I have high resistance written in the middle. And I have my frequencies on the end. And that is this 100 megahertz frequency sending on both sides of this high resistance. What is happening here is that when you send a high frequency, the middle of the wire appears to have very high resistance. So these high frequencies are not able to travel down the middle of the wire. They actually travel on the edge of the wire because there's such high resistance in the middle they can't travel here like if you were sending a, a regular dc current it would travel throughout the entire wire or even maybe a low frequency that will travel on the entire wire as well but when the frequencies get high this is what happened the middle of the wire appears to have very high resistance so your frequency is forced to be sent on the edges. This is the reason why the wire has to be wider because if it is not wider, you wouldn't have any room to send your frequency. By the time you get the high resistance in the middle, you wouldn't have enough room on the edge to send anything. So this is what it looks like. I'm using the copper pipe at the bottom here just to show you exactly how this works. Normally, if you're sending a DC current or low frequency, if this is a copper wire, your current will be coming through this area here. There won't be any high resistance area at all. It would be through the whole wire. However, with high frequencies, your frequency is only traveling on the outer edge here. And the middle has high resistance. Okay, so that is exactly what is happening here. So we have just talked about this particular diagram here. So what I went ahead and do was to add another one, but change the frequency to 1000 megahertz, which is one gigahertz. And that's all I changed. I'm still keeping the 18 gauge wire in between. Everything else is the same. All I did was to change the frequency. And by changing the frequency, look what happened. The high resistant area in the middle of the wire has widened. So this copper wire now has a wider high resistant area. So your frequency is pushed closer to the edge. I know you're sending a higher frequency. And the problem is now is that this area here is not enough to get your frequency through. So you got no data at this end. So basically, this is the reason why coaxial cables are larger because the frequencies are higher and you have this high resistant area in the middle. And every time you increase your frequency, the high resistant area increase. So your data is pushed closer to the edge. So what do you do to, as a solution to this problem? Get a larger cable. This is exactly what we did down here. We changed to the type of cable that would be an RG11, which is 12 gauge cable. 12 gauge would be a bigger cable than 18. It works, it works in the reverse to when you're counting, right? Normally we think that bigger numbers will have a bigger uh, size cable, but it doesn't work that way, it's opposite. So, a 12 gauge would actually be a bigger diameter. The cable would have a, a larger diameter than the 18 gauge, okay? So now we have a larger cable down here than we did here, but we're sending the same 1000 megahertz. So we have the same size, high resistant area. That This wouldn't widen because it's the same frequency, but because we're using 
a larger cable than this one here we have more room on the sides to send our data so this frequency of 1000 megahertz could now get through because now you have the room to send it so coaxial cables will always have larger diameters than twisted pair for the simple reason that for coaxial cables are made to send high frequencies um, coaxial cable can actually send up to 3 gigahertz so however a twisted pair cable can only send as high as 30 megahertz so at 30 megahertz yes you will have a high resistant area in the middle still because you are is a high frequency but the high resistant area will be very narrow extremely narrow so you wouldn't it wouldn't be anything to really worry about so for even though the cable is much smaller you could still get your data through because the high resistant area is very small um, Coaxial cables are made for much higher frequencies, so they have to be larger. I hope this video was helpful to you and it was able to answer any questions that you may have. And if it didn't and you will have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line and let me know. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. If this video was helpful, please don't forget to like. And if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll be joining me in the next video.